Hi guys, thanks for tuning in to another video on ForgottenWeapons.com. I'm Ian, I'm here today at the Rock Island Auction House taking a look at some of the guns they have for sale coming up in their June of 2015 regional auction. I found one in the pistol cases that jumped out at me because this is something I've read about, but this was the first time I'd actually gotten to take a, a personal hands-on look at one of these. This is a bear pistol. These were manufactured from 1899 until about 1914, frankly the beginning of World War I, which ended production of a lot of, of small civilian pistols. Um, they were manufactured by the Sauer Company in Germany, and they were invented by a man named Burkhardt Bear. Now, he had his own uh, manufacturing facility for hunting weapons, and it's not really known why these were manufactured by Sauer instead of by him, but there it was, he, uh, he decided to set up that arrangement. Now, what makes this pistol kind of interesting is primarily its extremely thin profile. Uh, this was the very definition of a pocket pistol, and it's also a, a little bit unusual in how it's set up. It's a four-shot gun, it has two barrels, and it has a four-shot rotating square cylinder block, you could call it. So you'd fire two shots, and then you'd have to rotate the cylinder manually, and then you'd be able to fire two more shots. Uh, initially, these were manufactured in 7mm Bear, which was a, obviously a proprietary cartridge. However, the vast majority of them appear to have been made in 25 ACP. These, like I said, these were introduced in 1899, which means right about the same time, just after these came out, the Browning Model 1900 came out, which was pretty much the same size. It was a little bit thicker, but not that much thicker, and it was a self-loader, held more cartridges, and in a larger caliber and it really proved very difficult for this bear pistol to compete with. So ultimately that's what led to the downfall of these things. Uh, at least 6,000 of these were manufactured. This one is serial number 5800 and change, and I've seen reference to one in the, 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 the lower 6,000s. So, you know, that's, that's not too bad. Um, I'm sure it was probably a profitable gun, especially if bear was selling it under license through Sauer. So. At any rate, I think there are some modern gun makers who could maybe take a, a lesson or two from something like this. Why don't I bring the camera back and let's take a little bit up close look at it. The bear pistol is really quite simple to operate. You've got the four, four different chambers. Our breech block drops out very quickly. There's that. It sits right there. This lever on top is your locking lever, so it holds that cylinder block in place. When you want to rotate it, you push this down, and then we can spin that around, and it locks in place the other direction. The trigger folds, so will sit unobtrusively in a pocket. When you're ready to shoot it, the trigger just folds down. This is double action. And there you go, we've got two barrels. So you fire the first two shots up here, and then you hit that, rotate it, does snap into place, top and bottom and you're ready to fire two more shots. When you want to reload it, open it up, pull the block out, you can then push out your empty cases. There is no ejector here, and reload it. So you can see there's a little bit of a gap at the back. That is to give space for the cartridge head and rim. The 25 ACP was a semi-rimmed cartridge, so there's enough there to, uh, to headspace the cartridge on and keep them in position. It's remarkable just how incredibly thin this gun is. Um, certainly far thinner than almost any automatic pistol. Today, obviously thinner than a revolver. This is, this is basically like having a, a little tiny four-shot Derringer. Now, I find it kind of interesting that despite you know, the, the very thin size, the rest of the gun is, is actually a bit bulky. Uh, for a four-shot 25 auto, you'd think they would have made the rest of this a bit smaller. So, on the other hand, if you have a pocket, this will certainly drop into a pocket very easily. And it does have sights, unlike many small guns of the era. Um, they're very small sights, but... All right, so mechanically, the bear pistol is not all that complex. The trickiest piece about it is the firing pin here, which needs to uh, alternate between the top and the bottom firing pin hole. You can see there are two. When you go to fire this, it fires the top. What it should do is automatically cycle this then to the bottom, which I can do manually like that. 
you can see now, it'll protrude through the bottom firing pin hole. Um, there's, there's something mechanically a little bit too worn on this pistol. Every once in a while it actually does work properly, but most of the time it stays on the top. So, uh, this is operated by, there are actually like four different springs in here. The main spring, however, is a V-spring right here. We have a second little V-spring there. We have a little coil spring in here to provide some tension on the trigger. And then we have our disconnector right there. So, uh, the one other thing you will find on these once you disassemble them is the serial number. So this is 5800 and change. Most of these guns are going to be found in 25 ACP. Um, I think there are only a very small number of them made in 7 millimeter bare. While the gun is apart, we can also take a look at the breech block here. Got four chambers, and we've got a couple of markings on, on both sides. So this was patented in England, Russia, and North America, or Rusland and Nord America. And then on the other side, also patented in Belgium. So there are your numbers, and we have our proof mark right there. So pretty simple. That little round pin hole is uh, what locks this in place in either position. And then these two little divots are what actually rotate it, uh, hold it in the gun. Thanks for watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed the video. It's certainly not every day that we get to take a look at a pistol. It is just this thin. Certainly would drop into a pocket very well. Um, if you'd like to drop it into your own pocket, it is coming up for sale at Rock Island here at the end of June 2015. If you take a look at the, the link below in the description text, that will drop you over to Rock Island's catalog page on this pistol. You can check out their pictures, their description, and everything's right there at your fingertips to create an account and place a bid online. So good luck and thanks for watching.